can get to the outside and make it happen. And again, this time to the tailback. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. You don't see that a ton, do you? With a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Now a handoff here to his running back. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Now play number eight on this drive, and they need nine yards to pick up the first on third. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up a live ball here, remember. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. 20, 10, and he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. As his guys are in for six, as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Myers connects on the PAT, and it's now a 7-0 game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. The last time they had a little bit of a special teams breakdown and a field goal was blocked. Yeah, and everything has to be precise in the kicking game. Snap, hold, kick. Obviously, the blocking to keep people out. So what you really want to do is get in there and get six points and take the pressure off of those guys. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's second and eight. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Adam Shaheen was the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. Well, he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, they'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. Looking to throw. Meredith. That'll be taken in there by Miles Boykin. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A nice pickup of 23 on the third down conversion. Let's go! The first carry for Josh Adams. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Check it out. Check out. From the gun, Meredith. And he'll find Hall. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 33. And the Bears first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 
And he'll give it here to his running back. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. And to give this time to the tailback. He fights forward for a couple with a penalty flag down. And the linemen, they're already walking back. Oh, yeah. So on the big tight end, holding. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing there, no gain, and now they're looking at a third and 15. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Operating from the gun, Meredith, he'll get this complete into the hands of Riley Ridley. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 20-yard line. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And this is going to be intercepted. Tedrick Thompson picks it. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And I think they are going to get this one back. Well, that would have been something. Double turnovers. But instead, they'll keep the possession on the INT. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 42-yard line. So they need to determine if that knee was down before the ball was coughed up. And they also wanted to make sure that the ball was possessed as they were going through it, that the ball wasn't working its way free before the knee hit the ground. The Seahawks take over first and 10 at their own 41-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done.
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Throwing again, Meredith. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The Bears on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This is third and ten. From the gun, Meredith. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Throwing the football, he's not as sharp as he was last week when he was over 70%. Right now, he's under 50%. Well, that comes from extra game film, extra time. You know those guys watched him all week, saw how precise he was, and constructed a defense to try and chip away at that, and thus far they've been successful. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and we'll try and think with them here. Try and play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now we're shot penny. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 12 first down Seahawks. I absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A first down carry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I would think as a play caller, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. On second down, this is Madison. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. That can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Yeah, things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. Well, soul searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Here's second and seven now from the 28. 
They run the counter. Stanton. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. To throw on third down. Meredith. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. A rookie QB struggling gets thrown down to the ground there, but you know, maybe this game, it's not over yet, but maybe this game can be a learning experience for him. So many different things that he has to pick up on. When to, when to go ahead and flush from the pocket and run. When to get rid of the football and not take the sack. When to just go ahead and go down early and make sure you don't get, make sure you don't fumble the football. So many things that he has to learn. This game starts the process. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. DK Metcalf, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that makes our score 17-0. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're down. I know, but you're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just, you called, a I think you just called a desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. What a difference a week makes. Last week he hit on over 80% of his passes. This week he's down under 50%. What do you see as the difference? Well, I think we're used to seeing a drop. If someone's over 80%, they're not going to hold that number, not in this league. But a drop under 50%, that just tells me that the defense has been a lot extra. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off here, the 32. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Now Myers for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. Looking to throw on second down. Meredith. And this is incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. The Bears on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and five. Operating from the gun, Meredith. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Trey Flowers picks it, and he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. 
second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how it bounces back. Yeah, there's two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen. A good pick up there, 22. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And yeah, he did. Seattle. Russell Wilson with two first half touchdown passes as his guys continue to pour it on. Myers connects on the PAT and the route is on here in this first half. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears' offense. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where... that his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Tedrick Thompson picks it. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. So his... Struggles just continuing here in the first half, throwing the football, Charles. Now three interceptions. And they don't feel like they're just great plays by the defense. There's a sense that maybe he's a little careless with the football now. So some of the great coaches in the past, you know they've always said? I can't teach you, obviously, because you're not listening. So maybe the bench can teach you. He's got to be careful now. He might get pulled. And we remind you, coming up at the half, we'll join who, Charles? The coach. <laughs> the coach, Jonathan Coachman, standing by in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from games in progress, as well as scores from earlier today. The coach. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. Well, someone's closing in on the league lead in sacks. He came into the game in the top five. Now you add two more to his total. Wilson and the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Had to pass there. Third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw again. Meredith. And now here is another interception. He's picked off at his own 46. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown.
The extra point now coming from Myers. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is taken at his four. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And in a spot like this, still more than a minute, I think if you put something on the board before halftime, that would go a long way towards helping them get back into the game. There actually is something to the psychology of the game at times, isn't there? How much better would they feel running into the locker room, as you noted, with something on the board in a positive fashion? You're exactly right. It's a great opportunity to get that done. First down, Chicago. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. From the gun, here's Brissett. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Mark 55, Mark 55. Brissett. Oh, it was hit at the line of scrimmage and intercepted. Picked off at the 40. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it, Kurt Coleman? Oh, yeah, that's then right. Then with the Eagles? That's right. Then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. We want this. Cut! After the interception, here's Wilson. Flush to his right. And he's going to keep it here. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. To throw is Wilson. And he's got it. Zone for the Seahawk touchdown. Make it a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Extra point up and through by Myers. And a route is on here in this first half. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Well, look at the clock here. You're inside of a minute. First half hasn't gone that well for you. How are you going to play this drive? Well, I've been told by my coaches previously that the intelligent approach, go ahead and run out the clock and start over. Don't make any more mistakes. But there's also something to understanding that you get this last drive here. You get the ball to start the second half. Try and go two for one here. Get some points now and come out of the locker room and get more points again and get your momentum really built up. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead and we resume action here in quarter number three. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Let's go. 
at the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. they got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Brissett. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Tedrick Thompson picks it, and they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Going to run with Madison again. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Charles, did I just hear that right? They declined the personal foul. Free yards, they just declined them. And I have to think that the official is thinking to himself, did I just hear that correctly, that you declined that one? All I can think of is that someone on the field got confused. Because Must have. It had to, because you're going to take the yards on that penalty each and every time. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. The Bears take over first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they have possession. And they have it at the 38-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Here we go. Here's Madison running on first down. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because when they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Third quarter and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. On third down, they run with Madison. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Now on fourth and inches, they're going to want to talk this over. We get a timeout. 
It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Now here's Michael Dixon. He's been terrific so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This one angles out of bounds at a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears' offense. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Right back to him on first down. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Three yards on the pick up there, but they've only got it back to third and ten. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Watch the run. Watch the run. It's soft, baby. That's baby soft. 49. Check 49. Check 49. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Able to find Shaheen, the tight end. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 16 yards is the pick up there and a first down for Chicago. Brissett now just two out of six since coming on, but he's got a first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down, making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. Looking to throw on second down. Reset. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Now Brissett. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty. And it's fourth down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary it really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Wow, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Another carry now for Madison. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. 70, Indy. 
They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's something got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. They'll keep it on the ground. Stanton, an assured three-yard pickup, gets him up to the 15. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. Mark 55, Mark 55. Let's put him on the buses. Let's put that team on right. On third down, Brissett. And he's going to go down. Back at his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there. Now a fair catch called for and made right on the 45-yard line. On the NFL scoreboard elsewhere, third quarter down in Arizona. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. And we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They'll run with Madison. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And the Seahawks on third down, as bad as you can be. 0 for 7 thus far. This is third and 11. Montgomery, and he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line, that's where they spot it. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Bringing him to the ground defensively, Tedrick Thompson. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play play. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. Set from the gun on third. He's going to go for a big play down. And got his man complete. A huge play there for Chicago. And even 40 yards. Uh, defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. The excellent play last time is followed by a much more routine gain of three. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. 
They'll keep it on the ground. Stanton. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Watch the screen, watch the screen. Watch the script set. Mike, 55. Right. 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 To throw, Brissett. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. To Montgomery to begin the drive. Montgomery hit, and the ball is loose. And this is picked up by the Bears. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But, hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. So don't say nothing. He's coming. Double up. He's coming. Double up. Showing it. Showing it. They'll keep it on the ground. Stanton. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. He was brought down by Ben Hurtford. A three-yard gain on the play brings up third down. Set! 60 out low. You can't block me. Go, go. You can't shut up. On third down, Stanton. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. Give him six yards in the first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And again this time to the tailback. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Watch out, watch out, watch out. On second down, Stanton. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. Another example of just a dominant performance by this defense. Now you hear all the time about teams that try to steal signals from the other side and try and learn their signs and their tendencies. It's almost like they get the answers to the exam the night before and were well prepared for this final. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Bears use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. Extra point splits the uprights as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance, where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. And a lopsided blowout? 
the roads are usually open. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Here's second and nine. Just a yard on that last run. Man, that's trash. That's trash. And they'll indeed take a knee. On the keeper. A one yard loss on the play. It's now third and ten. Ready, set. 58, 58, it's Mike. Here we go, D. Here I come, here I come. Let's go. And they take a knee. It's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Seahawks... They're on a nice early roll as they move to 3-1 and one with a win here. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for the Bears, they'll fall back to 500 at 2-2. Two and two. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.